good morning, good afternoon, everyone out there. It's a pleasure for me to have the opportunity to present you with this, this conference the topic Digital Switchgears for Intelligent Secondary Distribution Grid Automation. Within this presentation, I would like to give you an overview about our eco-efficient and intelligent ring main units, the so-called IRMUs, as well as on low-power instrument transformers as an alternative for conventional ones and about the distribution automation devices installed in the IRMU or the intelligent substation. Let's first have a look on the eco-efficient and intelligent ring main units from our 8DJH family. The three Ds, digitalization, decarbonization and decentralization have also influenced the requirements on the design of gas isolated ring main units, which have used SF6 as insulation gas for the last 35 to 40 years. Decarbonization has pushed us to develop an alternative concept to prevent the use of SF6 in the future. Digitalization has brought us to implement further IEDs and sensors in the RMUs. Decentralization is last but not least the driver for more and more distribution grid automation functions to master the challenges of the influence of e-car charging and renewable energy supplies on the distribution grids. The result of all these requirements are our new eco-efficient and intelligent ring main units 8DJH12 Blue GIS and 8DJH24 Blue GIS. Equipped with low power instrument transformers, distri instrument transformers distribution automation devices, IoT connectivity and different sensor technologies and apps for condition monitoring and distribution grid automation. Blue GIS is our solution for reliable, sustainable and efficient gas isolated switchgears without any F gases or chemical additives, which do not cause any CO2 emission costs during the whole lifetime. Blue GIS is your future proof investment with a high performance and a long service life. Next to the SF6 version, we have in the meanwhile two new Blue GIS members in our 8DJH RMU family. The 8DJH12 Blue GIS up to 12 kV with 20 kA rated short time withstand current and 630 amp bus bar and feeder currents as well as our 8DJH24 Blue GIS up to 24 kV with 20 kA rated short time withstand current and 630 amp bus bar and feeder currents. Both provide three position load brake switches and circuit breakers in different feeder types with a well-proven Siemens vacuum interrupters as individual panels as well as in block type designs. When we think about the question, what makes the new Blue GIS as well as the classical SF6 RMUs intelligent, we need to consider the following components. An intelligent gateway or RTU, for example our CCAM A8000 family, a communication modem, a UPS with a power supply unit and a battery, a motor control unit, an intelligent short circuit earth fault indicator, here as an example our CCAM FCM feeder condition monitor, with external or integrated low power VTs and last but not least, low power CTs. For about the last 10 years, 
low power instrument transformers have become more and more popular in ring main units to provide current and voltage information with high accuracy class from the medium voltage distribution grid to be able to monitor the load flow and the direction of possible faults. The current sensors for our 8DJH family are based on a low power inductive current transformer where the current is converted into a proportional voltage by implementing a precision shunt. They provide an output signal of 225 millivolt at nominal current, which is in our case 300 amps, with an accuracy class up to 0.5. They are available in different housings as split core and closed core types, as well as a combined housing, especially for the 8DJH ring main feeder where we are also able to integrate the sensitive earthfold current core. Voltage sensors are available as pluggable resistive dividers in different shapes, dependent on the type of cable T-plug which is in use. As the backside cone of non-symmetric cable T-plug types are not standardized, we have in the meanwhile several different sensor types in use. All of them provide an output signal of 3.25 volt at square 3 at the nominal voltage with an accuracy class up to 0.5. For further temperature monitoring, they are optionally available with an integrated PD100 temperature sensor. As current and voltage sensors as separate components required further site installation efforts and as the voltage sensors are dependent on the type of T-plug, which is each and every time a logistic challenge, to have the right plug for the right sensor on site, we had the idea to integrate the sensors in the cable connection bushing as part of the intelligent RMU. This solution, the so-called SI bushing, smart and intelligent bushing, will be launched within summer this year, together with a special version of the CCAM FCM short circuit and earthfold indicator, we will be able to provide an optimized integrated solution in our RMUs. The SI bushing is designed with a Rogowski coil for current measurement and a capacitive divider for voltage measurement. Both sensors are compliant with the instrument transformer standard for passive non-conventional voltage and current transformers. The Rogowski coil provides 22.5 mV at 50 amp 50 Hz and the capacitive divider has a transmission ratio of 10,000 to 1. Both provide an accuracy class better than 0.5. An integrated PD100 is used for ensuring the accuracy of the voltage measurement over a wide temperature range, as well as for further temperature monitoring of the cable connection. For the connection of a VDIS system to determine the absence of the voltage, we have implemented a second capacitive voltage divider separate from the measuring one. To be able to transfer the sensor information to the control center or into the cloud for further applications, we need further distribution automation devices like FPIs and RTUs. The Siemens Intelligent Short Circuit Earthfold Indicator is called CCAM FCM. It measures voltage, current and can calculate all kinds of powers, cosinus phi and the frequency. It is designed 
for rough ambient conditions in secondary transformer substations and provides inputs for either non-conventional as well as optionally for conventional CTs and VTs. It provides a wide range power supply as well as a Modbus communication interface and an event archive. The CCAM A8000 is the Siemens RTU platform for the integration in intelligent RMUs or substations. Various modules for analog and digital inputs and outputs, as well as a robust design for harsh environment conditions, together with integrated security and communication functions, makes it to the perfect RTU for secondary distribution automation functionalities. If space limitations do not allow to install the RTU in additional low voltage compartments of the RMU, we can also provide an external so-called distribution automation box to be connected via a standardized interface to the RMU and installed in another area of the substation. To summarize the content of my presentation, I would like to highlight our consistent concept for the secondary distribution grid automation within the intelligent transformer substation. All components on the medium and low voltage side can communicate via a standardized Modbus RTU communication interface to a central remote control unit, which provides further communication to the control center and or in the cloud for further applications and transparency of the secondary distribution substation. Heavy customers all over the world are already using our solution of intelligent ring main units for further distribution grid automation functions to master the challenges of the influence of ECA charging and renewable energy supplies on the distribution grid. If you are looking for a competent partner for digital switchgear for intelligent secondary distribution automation, we as Siemens can support you in the project planning as well as during the realization phase without our experience from worldwide executed projects with components from our perfectly tailored portfolio. Thank you very much for your attention and don't hesitate to contact me for further questions or ask them now, as in my opinion, we have enough time to answer them immediately. <laughs> Thank you, Bernd. Yes, we do have time. It was a um, crisp presentation, so we definitely have time for questions. And I invite you again to ask your questions directly to Bernd. Um, I have some there, but we have more time than I have questions right now. So think about what you want to know from our expert. We are here for you. Um, the first question I see here is, does CCAM FCM good for 400 Hz? And what voltage and current sensors works on 400 Hz, please? <laughs> I would say 400 hertz is not uh, the usual frequency we have in the, in the distribution grids. So therefore, the CCAM FCM is designed first of all for 50 or 60 hertz mm -hmm. applications and up to yeah, 40 kV, 40.5 kV for the standard um, yeah, medium voltage grid applications. Uh, to be honest, I'm not able to answer this question. <laughs> I have to take it with me. The 400 hertz is, yeah, I never heard this question, but we will check it and we will come back with an answer after this session. Perfect. Thank you. And then there is the question, are there any examples of algorith algorithms implemented on medium voltage or low voltage substation level? <laughs> also a question <laughs> which is very specific. So mm -hmm. I, I interpret this question as if we have first, uh, let's say, applications 
to manage the, uh, the grid automation, the secondary distribution automation of the grids. And yes, we have further concepts. I think we have also today, or was it already, a special um, session from Oliver Schrödel, mm -hmm. who is it our expert come. for these um, applications. <laughs> And in my opinion, he has a lot of these applications already implemented in all our devices. So do you offer complete digital substation, including a substation housing? Yeah, this is a very good question. So to be honest, um, most of the substation buildings, or especially the compact substations, we are relying on partners. So because we are not the experts for concrete cement substations, so therefore we have partners for that. We have our own co concept for metal clad substations, where we are also offering and providing a partnership concept. So that means, dependent on the market in which country the request comes up mm -hmm. for complete substations, we have either partner or we can provide a partnering concept for our own concept of a metal clad substation. Okay, thank you. And then there is the question, when SI bashing will be launched tentatively? Yeah, so the, the answer in the presentation was <laughs> around summer. <laughs> around summer means at the moment it's planned for end of July, beginning of August. Uh, to be honest, we have it already yeah, offered, provided and already also delivered for pilot applications. So I'm not talking about something which is not reality at the moment. So it's already there. We are in the last phases for our configuration, for our tests. But we are very pretty sure that the sea bushing will be available in August latest. And then also, what is the most important thing, sea bushing alone without any device does not work. <laughs> So we need also the IEDs to be connected to the SI bushing and these already also will be or we have already some available and the others will come around summertime also so it's, it's very good aligned that we will have the IED and the I bushing at the same time available. So we talk about summertime um European summertime for the total release, kind of, and the Southern Hemisphere summertime for the pilot customers right now, kind <laughs> yeah. of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. So, up to what temperature outside can this work as RMUs are expected to be installed outside? Yeah, so I think it was mentioned on one of the presentation <laughs> slides. So the, the IEDs especially, which are the most critical thing, um, are designed for minus 40 up to plus 70 degrees. We know <laughs> that the real occurring temperatures, especially when you have applications in Saudi Arabia, where the whole day sun is shining on top of a metal um, metal roof of the substation, mm -hmm. then we also have there 80 or even 90 degrees. And yeah. As I said, um, from the standard, they are tested up to plus 70 degrees, but these applications we have already since years in use. Um, they withstand these harsh environment conditions and we are sure that also 80 or 85 degrees is not a big topic if it's not permanent. And okay. I expect <laughs> it's not because um, after day, mostly it comes night and then you will have a, a cooling down and therefore, yeah, this plus 70 is a tested IEC standardized temperature, but we can withstand also a little bit more. That's hot. I don't yeah. want to work there, so I'm glad that only the sensors are there. <laughs> <laughs> is voltage sensor and current sensor use merging unit technology for the communication with protocol protection devices or RTU? Yeah, so we have two different applications for that. So the voltage and the current sensors I have shown and presented. Um, in this application, they were connected directly either to the short circuit asphalt indicator or directly to the RTU. But we have also in our portfolio so-called standalone merging units or a merging unit integrated in a protection device. And for this application, there will be special interfaces also in the future. So today I have shown that what will come in summertime. A little bit later, there will come up more. So we are also talking about special protection relays for to be connected to the SI bushing. And in these protection relays, there will be also in the future a so-called merging unit functionality that we are able to transmit 
the, the analog signals to the so-called process bus communication to be integrated or to be an integrated part in complete um, digital substations, also for primary digital substations. Okay, thank you. So once again, it makes sense to just stay tuned to all our channels because yeah. things are coming through the year. Um, is CCAM capable of handling decentralized self-healing grid is the question. Yeah, this is something <laughs> coming back to, I think it was the first question, one of the applications mm -hmm. for, for this whole concept. And I'm pretty sure that Oliver later on will present some of these applications. Yes, it is. We have already the so-called self-healing grid applications available. Um, programmized, configured in these RTUs. So again, if there are specific questions for these applications, maybe also with special requirements, we can manage them. We all have already a lot of experience for these self-healing grid applications, but we are also very flexible to manage also the specific customer requirements. And I think this presentation that was yesterday already with ah, okay. the, yeah, no problem, with um, the large fish farm in Norway right. and I think if you, it is already available as a recording so if you want to deep dive uh, or dive deeper into the topic of the CCAM applications, of this um, use cases there, uh, scroll, scroll through the agenda of yesterday we had Oliver with um, the, the self-healing grid application, we, we had, um, oh, I think the next session was about all the CCAM applications we have with the CCAM A1000 and then we had the CCAM microgrid applications mm -hmm. in, in a row in, the, in yesterday's agenda. So it might be interesting to take a look at the recordings there. We stay in this course, yeah. uh, we take one last question and this is, can we achieve class 02 accuracy with current and voltage measurement sensors? Yeah, also a very, very good <laughs> question. Um, as I mentioned in the presentation, our at the moment planned accuracy class to achieve is 0 0.5. But we know that for further applications like metering, like billing metering, um, the 0 0.2 is requested. Mm -hmm. So at the moment we have achieved, we have designed, tested the 0 0.5, but we are even a little bit more better than the 0 mm -hmm. 0.5. So there's some, I would say, room for improvement mm -hmm. that we can achieve also the 0 0.2. We are working on that. But the one topic is to have the 0 0.2 um, accuracy in the sensors. But on the other hand side, we need also the country specific regulators to have already the regulations to use the application also for billing metering, for example, mm -hmm. because, because these um, regulations are not yet established. We are already in contact also with some uh, yeah, manufacturers for billing meters. We have own power meters in our portfolio. So all of them, we are in contact to have a solution in the future, maybe also for the 0 0.2. I could not promise it 100% at the moment. As I told you, we have to evaluate the accuracy of these sensors, which have at the moment the capability for 0 0.5. But we are pretty sure then we can have or make it a little bit more better in the future. Kind of, we are on track there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for staying with us. Thank you for the presentation Welcome. and for answers. And so we, I'm, I just say goodbye for now. Goodbye.